In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this epic gem of convenience, aka a beautiful pendant. Let's get started. The first thing is condition your clay. I use scrap clay because, well, I wanted to use up some stuff I have laying around. If that's not your jam, please pick a color that suits you. It doesn't have to be green. I chose to make a green iridescent gold pendant. I used a mold that is silicone, and what you have to do is be careful with this because the sheen that it gives is perfect. However, these are very malleable, so you have to get rid of those edges, so you can't just take it out and use it. You have to go back and press it really hard, and then you'll have to go back again with your razor blade to get a nice smooth finish. The next thing you're going to want to do is the fun part. You've got it nice, you've got it smooth, you've got it finished. You've got to now put it in a container. I use a plastic Tupperware and I add in my colors. I wanted to change the scrap clay to be a beautiful green tone. That's the original convenience gem. And so what I did was I utilized a few different colors of alcohol inks and sprayed them on basically let them zhuzh around and as you can see the paper that I have underneath this is for visual effects for you it gives it different color tones I take mica shift powder in a green with a gold inside of it it comes already pre-mixed you do not have to worry about that uh, mixing of your own which you could do and what you do is you just gently touch the brush with your finger and it will flow on. You could leave it as a speckled look, but I'm gonna show you how I made it more of a brush tone so it had like a swooping effect. I swear that it comes out really, really nice. And it's a simple project that even a beginner could do if you were new to polymer clay. I mean, can you imagine this? Look at what we have right here. This was scrap clay. And I now turned it into this beautiful, gem cabochon that's going to be magical and be basically the gem of convenience soon. I like to make this type of thing because I love RPG games and like Dungeons and Dragons and creating my own magic items just feels epic. I have to give a shout out to my son who came up with the idea for this one. Now I always finish the backs of my pieces and this particular one I pre-stamped. I don't show it in this video. I do have other videos. I'll put a link in uh, showing some stamping and what I do is I take the baked clay. Now this is baked already, mind you. You wouldn't want to press your finger on an unbaked piece if you're new to polymer clay. And I'm using the gem itself as a template. And I'm cutting around to give the backing its perfect fit. But I'm not gonna stop here because I have a really nice surprise and we're gonna show you how I do with it after. Now that I have my little backing, it's going to have some liquid polymer clay and I'm going to rebake this and the thing is with this project is you might have multiple bakings it may be time consuming but I promise you the end result is really nice and even if you don't make it exactly like I did you can do different versions of this and it will be beautiful you could even make this double-sided so please look at this check this beauty out I love butterflies. I have to tell you, butterflies are just something that I'm absolutely in love with. So what I did was I took a little butterfly and I pressed it into the unbaked backing and the end result is absolutely beautiful. Again, it's already baked, so I press real hard and get my piece done. And the reason I did the, the, the polymer clay afterwards, the liquid, is so it didn't ooze out tremendously on the sides. And then what I'll do is I'll have my little bale. I made the bale out of clay. And I took some of the leftover clay that was from the making of the pendant and just did a very simple loop. I cut it with a little bit of a razor then um, you don't even have to buy bales if you didn't want to. Granted, the look of a silver bale or a gold bale is beautiful, but in this case, I wanted it to really sort of blend into the piece itself. Now look at that. Look at that little butterfly down there. 
Wait till you see it completely done. It's just really pretty. See that? And so I gently press this in and what I'll do is I'll pancake it, but then I'll use a sculpting tool and get those edges to really adhere before I go and bake it. So I use a sculpting tool like you see here and it's got a bigger ball at the end and I'll go ever so carefully around the entire piece and make sure that it's completely sealed all the way around. And here's my simple gem of convenience. Look at the beginning um, and it shows you exactly what it does and how you could use it in your role play games and give it as a magic item and part of your treasures. How cool would that be to give a actual tangible item and also give them a digital version as well? You could create this yourself. How fun is that? Thanks for watching. I wanted to say, Please, if you like this video and you found it useful, subscribe. And my dog says thank you too. Have a great one.